All right, here we go. We are going to continue with our proofs. Again, please, please don't scare away from this. Just take notes. Uh, if you have any questions about anything that we go over today on this video, please just write it down in your notes to ask tomorrow in class with myself or a fellow classmate as we practice this stuff tomorrow. Uh, but we got to continue with our proofs. So what exactly is a proof when we're talking about a proof? Okay, this is, again, the most dreaded thing in geometry. But it's a logical argument that shows a statement to be true. So we're kind of like being a math lawyer here. What we're basically doing is we're, we're taking a statement, we're creating a hypothesis, okay? We're, I'm sorry, we have a hypothesis, we're creating a conclusion, and then we're proving it to be true using certain things such as postulates, theorems, and so on, okay? So a proof is a logical argument that shows a statement to be true. A theorem is a statement that can be proven, okay? These, I don't want to, you know, give anything more weight or less weight, but these things have a lot more validity. The most famous theorem that I can think of and that you probably can think of is probably the Pythagorean theorem. And you can actually prove that to be true, that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If you Google Pythagorean theorem, or if you might have seen this already, you're going to see uh, some images of basically... Uh, a triangle on a Cartesian plane and then some rectangles that go attached to the each uh, side of the triangle that's how they prove the Pythagorean theorem there's also a cool video out there on YouTube somewhere where it takes water and it does a water deal which maybe I'll show you sometime if, if we have time um, anyhow theorems can be proven all right so let's talk about the segment congruent theorems okay so segment congruent theorem says that if it me the measures are equal if the angle measures are equal, then the segment, I'm sorry, not angle, I'm talking about segments. If the segment measures are equal, then the segments are congruent, okay? So that's our congruency statement there, segment congruency theorem, segment congruent theorem, or congruent segment theorem, depends on how you look at it, okay? Now, let's take a look at our angle congruence theorem. So let's look at angle congruence theorem, okay? Basically, an angle congruence theorem says that if the angle measures are equal, then the angles are congruent. So angle congruence theorem, if the angle measures are equal, then the angle measures are congruent. Again, stuff that you already know, that's not anything that's crazy out there, okay? All right, so we're gonna do a two column proof now. There's lots of different types of proofs uh, that they are, you know, in Algebra 2, the, the pre-AP Algebra 2, you'll probably do some paragraph type proofs um, and just there's different si times you can draw to prove something uh, but the most common, the ones that we're going to use, is the two-column proof. Uh, I think this is, uh, again, this is the way I was taught when I grew up, so it's probably the easiest way for me to remember how to do it. Basically, you draw your diagram or picture. So whenever it's talking about something like angle segments, angles be congruent or segments being congruent, the first thing you want to do is draw your picture or your diagram that it's giving you so that you can write on it, so you can manipulate it as you need to. Then you're going to write the given and the proof, Okay. Once you write, and, then write, and that's part of the problem. That's not actually in this, you know, T-chart or whatever you want to call it, this table here. Once you've written the given and the proof, the given is your statement, and then you have to basically prove it. It's what, basically try, taking all the information that you find to prove it. That's given is the stuff that it gives you, and then you want to prove that it is, like if you say that 2x plus uh, 4 equals 10, if that's what's given to you, then you want to find out that, so you want to prove that x equals 3, something like that, okay? So then we're going to restate the given. That's generally when we put that in the statements, and then your reason will be given, and then you use the given or the diagram to find the next step. And then basically each step leads to the next step, and to the next step, and to the next step, kind of like you were exposed to in section 2.5 uh, and the homework you did on page 108 and on. All right, again, statements are based on facts you know or conclusions from your reasoning. So basically the stuff that you're looking at or what you've done or what you know how to do, that's the statement. And then the reason is the proof. It's a definition, postulates, theorems, or properties that you used. Notice I didn't put laws. We don't use law of syllogism here or law of, of uh, detachment. You use definitions, postulates, theorems, properties you use. Now with syllogism, we talked about this in one of the classes, but I want to make sure everybody hears this. Basically, our transitive property is syllogism. That's when you take that middle out. That's kind of the same concept, okay? Or is the same concept. All right, this will work on a proof, okay? I'm going to add a little story to this uh, along with 
just the segments. So here we're given, the given is B is the midpoint of AC and C is the midpoint of BD. We want to prove that the length of AB is equal to the length of CD. So we want to prove that this length is equal to this length. So if you look at it from a more of a story, uh, a more story angle, you can say the music store is in between the shoe store and the food, the food store. The middle of the shoe, exactly the same distance from the shoe store as it is from the food store. Okay? The shoe store is in the middle of the music and bookstore, and it's exactly the same distance from the music store as it is from the bookstore. So now we want to prove that the distance from the food to the music store is the same distance as it is from the shoe to the bookstore. So let's take a look. And these are congruent based on our midpoint, the fact that it's a midpoint, okay? All right, so B is the midpoint of AC, and C is the midpoint of BD. That's given. That's what it's set up here. B is the midpoint of AC. So we did that. We restated our, our given information, and here's our, our statement, and here's our reason, okay? Our next statement is that AB, segment AB, is congruent to segment BC, okay? And why is that? Well, that's the definition of a midpoint, right? When we have a midpoint, that's exactly what it is, okay? Our next statement is going to be BC is congruent to CD, okay? So BC is congruent to CD. Again, is that not the same thing as AB is congruent to BC? Yeah, definition of a midpoint, okay? So now that we've proven that AB is congruent to BC and BC is congruent to AD, Okay, we could use that syllogism, that syllogism law, or the transitive property to show that AB is congruent to CD. And again, that's the transitive property. Okay, uh, Miss uh, Wilson last year she used to tell students that it was you tran you know you transition or you trans transit like in a car car transit you go from you know, A, B to C, D through B, C. So you take out that road and you get right to it, okay? So now you've proven that A, B is congruent to C, D. So if A, B is congruent to C, D, the converse of our property that we just learned, okay, if we go back up here to our angle congruency theorem, if angle measures are equal, then the angles are congruent. What's the converse of that? If angles are congruent, then the measures are equal. So the converse of our angle congruency theorem will prove that AB is equal to CD. So the converse of the, I'm sorry, angle, I said angle, I meant segment, excuse me, my mistake. So the converse of the segment congruency theorem. So if segment AB is congruent to segment CD, then segment AB is equal to segment CD, measure up, okay? All right, so take a look here. There's another way we can prove that AB is equal to CD, and what is that? That's just the definition of congruency, right? The definition of congruency, if AB, if segment AB is congruent to segment CD, the definition of congruency is the measure of AB is equal to CD. So either one of those two would work. Either one of those is fine. Okay, That's just the definition of being congruent, and definition can work as a proof. Basically, that's what we're doing. We're now, yesterday, we were proving basically algebra steps. Okay, we were proving this step is prop, you know, addition or subtraction or substitution or whatever property. And we went from solving an algebra problem like we would do in algebra, but we were actually proving each step by using a property or simplifying. And now today, we're adding a, more geometry in that by improving segments and angles are also congruent or whatever the case is. We're getting more into the geometry piece versus the algebra piece. Okay, again, please, 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 please. If you have any questions, okay, any questions over any of this stuff, please write it down in your paper. And you can do many things to get that question answered. You can come into me in the morning, and, and if there's not a whole lot of people, we can go over that. Or you can come in uh, in the after school from 4 to 5, and pass, and we can do a, little, a lot more work together. Testify, Sarah Rowland, she can tell you. She's there a lot. Abby Bunhead, okay, Adams, she can tell you as well, because she's there quite a bit. Anna Curran, 
she's there with her hay fire, so she can tell you as well. Okay, those three ladies come in and they can see that you can get a little bit more work done after school than you can in the morning. Okay, uh, also you can come into class as well with those questions because I know that not everybody can go to tutoring, but you can come into the class with those questions and we can recap anything you need to recap before the class starts. Okay, also when you're in your CTGs, those CTGs, guys, you, you, I can't I can't stress that enough. Those CTGs will help you and. If you don't have any major questions, I can walk around and I can kind of make sure everything's going right and whatever the case is, okay? But don't think that you're out here on your own and if you don't get it, you don't get it. You've got to make sure you ask questions, okay? This way, you are prepared. You have should have 100% attention on this, taking good notes, writing down questions, and then in class, we can focus solely on your struggles and not on everything as a general whole so we can get more work done and more depth in there, okay? So please, write down any questions that you have, uh, and again, let's uh, get this taken care of. Come into class tomorrow, be ready to go. Have an early day so we can go out and support the Panthers. All right, have a great day.